I have used many camera bags, but over time, as my needs have changed, I change it up. If you take a look at, for example, my trip to Rocky Mountain National Park, you will see me snowshoeing with what was at the time my favorite bag. And it's still a great bag, but I outgrew it with one item in particular that I'll show you in a moment. But I've been looking for something new ever since. Enter the Atlas Athlete. <laughs> this has met that need and it is super flexible in terms of what I can put in it, so it's exceeded my expectations. There's something unique about this bag that I will show you. Raymond and I will be taking that item I mentioned and our Atlas Athlete packs here. Did I mention that Raymond has one? He does. We will be taking them on our upcoming snow adventure to Yellowstone National Park. In fact, we packed our bags today to make sure that all of our gear fits and I filmed it for members today. So check that out at the link down below. If you aren't a member, click the join button or there's a link in the description below as well to find out how to support this site and to see the exclusive content that I make just for members like packing videos. And if not, well, at least hit the subscribe button and hit like on my videos. I'm working hard here, people. So on to this bag. What I have found from doing several bag reviews is that you want to know how big the bag is, how durable it is, what will fit in it, cameras and otherwise, and things like, will it fit under the seat in front of you on an airplane? Also, when I am looking for a bag, I want to know things like how it feels after carrying it for several hours. So that is what I will discuss in today's video. The short version of this review is it's a great bag, go get one. But if you want the long version, I will get into all of those real life facts and my observations of having used it out in the wild and around town for well over a month. Full disclosure before we jump into it, Atlas Packs very generously gave these bags to Raymond and I. In fact, they handed them out to a bunch of us that were on that Sony trip that I took to Sedona in December. I know that brings up question marks over people's heads if reviews are genuine, but if I don't like a product, I typically don't review it. <laughs> I am being absolutely honest when I say that I love this bag and I really liked what the owner had to say about why the packs were developed in the first place. Basically, these were pro photographers that needed better bags and then, I really liked how they're talking about constantly striving to improve their product. Quite frankly, they're a company that I want to support by putting my opinion out here on my YouTube channel. In fact, even the link to this bag that's in the description down below is not an affiliate link. So no dollars are coming my way in any way, but get ready for a positive review. Although there are a few things about this pack that weren't perfect for me, so I found workarounds and I will talk about those things too. But this will almost certainly end up sounding like a commercial, so get ready. <laughs> Let's start with size. There are two sizes. I have here the regular size and Raymond has the tall size. Atlas's site actually has all of the specific measurements, but I can tell you that I am 5'5", Raymond is six feet tall, and we both feel like our bags fit right, and there's a lot of room for adjustment. You can actually get different sizes of the waist belt too, which I will get back to in a minute. Uh, Raymond and I are both pretty slim, and one issue that I have had in the past with big backpacks is that they restrict my, my range of movement because they stick out too far on either side of my body. But unless I have something really big um, in the side pockets here, like a big tripod, I end up having full range of motion with my arms, even with like, I have a little gorilla pod in here right now. Um, I can even run with this bag on, even with the little gorilla pod in it. So I have, I can run with it, but I can also swing my arms fully when I'm hiking. And I realize that it sounds a little bit crazy to run with a bunch of gear on your back, but I've done it quite often. Sometimes I want to be done with a hike. So I put my stuff in my bag and I run it in or like the time that I saw a bear across the way. So I packed my stuff and ran 
no joke. I was out testing the Mavic 2 Pro and once I realized that that bear was headed in the other direction, I ran down that mountain like I've never run before. I almost ran over an elk in the process. Fun times. Okay, more on the belts, like I promised. I mentioned that you can order different sizes. I do also have an experimental belt on mine. These belts come all of the way out, which incidentally means that you can also tuck them in if you don't want to use it. But like I mentioned in the beginning, the guys at Atlas are always taking customer feedback and trying to incorporate it in their product. So when I received this, they were testing out putting the more robust belt from their larger pack, it's called the Atlas Adventure, uh, onto this smaller pack. I ended up with one. I really like it. Raymond's is the original belt, but he likes that too. So also in the hip pockets, no matter what belt you have, there are these pockets that drop out. And now I haven't actually ended up using these yet, but I was thinking that snacks while I'm walking around would be good in here, like some loose Skittles or something that I can just grab. Or I think it would be good for changing lenses or any number of other things. The only thing about these dropout pockets is that it limits what you can put in the hip pockets when the drop pockets are tucked in. I can't really fit my phone in there, which is definitely a bummer because I do typically rely on these pockets for nutrition and to hold my phone. So. I may be making some modifications, like maybe cutting the drop bag out of one of those. I hate to do that to like this beautiful bag, but I may do it anyway, just so it suits my purposes perfectly. Um, or, you know, I was thinking about getting like a clip on phone pocket for one of the straps. I think that may be a good solution. Does anyone have one of those that they like? If you do, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, back to size. It is a 40 liter shell and the camera compartment takes up 10 of those liters. That basically means nothing to me. So what that means in real life snap chick terms is that I can fit layers of clothing, plenty of snacks, lots of camera gear, and whatever else I need to be out all day long. And that does include hydration and my laptop, which I will show you. Before we get there though, the very large capacity here is great and all, but I don't always need that much stuff. So this pack actually has a lot of straps to constrict everything down. Those also really come in handy when I do want to run with the pack because I can like batten down the hatches so that stuff isn't flopping around on my back, which that throws off my stride and I end up getting sore in weird places. So I like to be able to tug everything into tight place. That actually brings me to the comfort level. I have found that not all camera packs, even ones meant for hiking, are actually comfortable when you've had them on for hours upon hours, hiking along with stuff on your back. The straps on this bag are padded. The waistband is padded too, which both really help with comfort, especially because I don't have a whole lot of natural padding on me, but more than that, it is a well put together bag. So I have been able to wear it for long stretches of time with lots of gear in it without wanting to throw it off a cliff. And as I would expect, everything is adjustable. As I am a relatively small person, one of the things that I always end up with is these long straps hanging everywhere. Um, I do intend to cut some of these and re-sew so that they aren't in my way. Also with helping out with comfort is the structure of the pack too. Uh, the thing obviously stands up on its own. So it obviously has some good structure. The back is ventilated and it has this sturdy, but not hard foam, especially down at the bottom where it rests against the lower back. And the, the fabric is soft too. So it doesn't chafe me at all, even when I've been sweaty and dirty out on the trails. So all in all, you know that you have a pack on, but the way the pack is made really helps make the weight manageable. Back to size for a minute. Raymond and I will be traveling on an airplane with these packs soon. So where will they go? Well, my regular size pack will fit into the overhead compartment on larger planes, you know, lengthwise. It will not on smaller planes though. Raymond's large pack won't fit in either unless you take the frame out, which you can do pretty easily. You just pull the frame out and you 
put it on top of the bag or in your suitcase, and then the top smashes down a bit so that the overhead bin door will close or that you're able to get the bag under the seat in front of you. Okay, so neither bag will technically fit under the seat in front of you without taking that frame out, but I may have shoved it down there anyway. Don't tell anybody. A couple more things on the outside of the pack are the many pockets many pockets. <laughs> These ones on the sides can hold large water bottles or a tripod or whatever you need. And there are all sorts of loops for attaching things. In this pocket, you can put a two liter hydration bladder and there is routing for the tube. However, this doesn't work for me because I don't like it being side mounted because it throws me off balance. Plus, two liters of water isn't enough for me. So I put my three liter water bladder in this open pocket here and then just route the tube around. I actually got an insulated bladder and insulated tube for my upcoming trip to Yellowstone where I will be out in sub freezing temperatures. So it will be definitely interesting to see how that holds up for me and I will definitely let you know. All right, moving inside to the non-camera compartment another pocket and more loops under here. And it's just a big old open space in here with a slot pocket for your laptop. It fits my 15 inch MacBook Pro with a bit of room to spare. One person I talked to wanted more protection for his laptop than this pocket provides, but I think you could just put your laptop in a sleeve and then slip it into this pocket. That's totally a personal preference though. Like I mentioned before, you can see how big this is. It has the capacity to expand quite large for your clothing layers and such, but like I said, you can batten down the hatches and make it a little bit smaller so it's lower profile. Now on to the camera compartment. The super special trick that is up this pack's sleeve is this, it's origami camera core. So sometimes I wanna carry a lot of gear, but sometimes I don't wanna carry a lot of gear. What I don't want is a lot of empty space in my bag. As I've mentioned before, I like to keep things as low profile as I can to keep me nimble. So I can fit lots in like so, or I can pull this handle and magically the camera compartment becomes smaller. And incidentally, the non-camera compartment becomes larger. I know it is absolutely amazing. Why didn't anyone think of this before? This is really what caught my eye about this pack because I typically like to pack fairly light, but sometimes I wanna bring this guy, the Nikon 200 to 500 at 5.6 lens. It's big. This is the thing that didn't, didn't fit into any of the other hiking packs that I could find that you could also run with that also had a convenient hydration bladder compartment and that weren't massively wide packs. And I can fit this lens in here on its own or on my Z7 with the FTZ adapter or on my D500 or D810, plus a whole slew of other items. Here are a few different combinations of gear that we have put into these bags. Also, the link below to Atlas's site has a bunch of photos of different things that you can fit in here in different configurations, but this origami camera core, which is kind of a fun name, is really the thing that stands out about this pack for me. You can't access this compartment with the bag on, but that isn't something that I ever did. I always put my bag on the ground, in the dirt, in the snow, or whatever, to do any gear changes. I just always found it to be unwieldy to try to balance a bag on the waist strap or around the side and keep my gear safe while changing lenses. That being said, I should mention that this bag is washable. So when you do get it dirty, you can make it bright and shiny again in the washing machine. Other things inside the camera area are that you get a ton of dividers and they're bendable. The long ones have Velcro on the bottom so that they really stay put and create a sturdy structure for your gear. Also, there are pockets on the door to the camera compartment. It's nice stretchy material so everything stays put. And last here, this is something pretty small, but I like that there are big pulls on the zippers. So I'm never trying to find the zippers when I want to quickly get into my bag. 
they're just easy to find and grab a hold of. A couple of last random things. There are a couple of colors available. Mine is bright yellow so that you can see me in the wild, but Raymond's is black so that it flies a little more under the radar. They give you extra zipper pulls, which is just cool. And there is a waterproof cover tucked into the bottom. I really appreciate that feature because when you're out for a long time, you never know what you're gonna run into. Also, if you follow that link down in the description below, I mentioned before, there is a ton more information on size, what exactly fits into this bag, the materials, how to choose a size. Of course, feel free to ask me questions too. I tried to cover all of the things that I look for when I'm shopping for a new camera bag, but if you have any other questions, ask them down in the comments below. And thank you for watching everyone.